In this video, we're going to focus on 2D shapes and also the equations that go with it. So let's start with the circle. So this is one of those shapes that you need to know. And there's two main formulas that go with it. The circumference of the circle, which is the distance around the circle, that's 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. The radius is the distance between the center on the circle and any point on the circle. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared. And finally, the diameter is simply twice the radius. So this here is the diameter of the circle. It's the distance between one point on a circle and the other point, and the diameter has to pass through the center of the circle. The next shape we're going to talk about is the rectangle. So here is the rectangle. This is the length of the rectangle, and this is the width. So the other side is also the width, and this is the length as well. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And the perimeter is basically the sum of all four sides. So L plus L is 2L, and W plus W is 2W. So make sure you know these two formulas, the perimeter and the area of a rectangle. Now sometimes you may need to calculate or determine the length of the diagonal. So notice that it forms a right triangle. So based on the Pythagorean theorem, which is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, we can say that d squared is equal to l squared plus w squared. And if you take the square root of both sides, the length of the diagonal is the square root of l squared plus w squared. So those are the three main equations that you need to know for the rectangle. Now the next two-dimensional figure that we need to talk about is the square. So what do we know about the square? In a square, all four sides are the same. So if you call this, let's say, x, every other side has the same length, x. Now for a rectangle, we said that the area is length times width. For a square, it's going to be x times x, or simply x squared. Now what about the perimeter? What is the perimeter of a square? The perimeter is the sum of all four sides. So it's going to be x plus x plus x plus x. So we're adding x four times. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. If you add it four times, it will give you 4. So the perimeter of a square is simply 4 times one of its side lengths. Now the last thing is the length of the diagonal. So we saw in the other example how d squared was equal to l squared plus w squared. In this case, l and w are both equal to x. So d squared is x squared plus x squared. 1x squared plus 1x squared is 2x squared. And so if you take the square root of both sides, you'll find that the length of the diagonal in a square is the square root of 2 times whatever the side length is. And so those are the three main equations that you need to know for the square. The area, which is x squared, the perimeter, which is 4 times x, and the length of the diagonal, which is the square root of 2 times x. Next up, we have the right triangle. So what formulas do we need to know for the right triangle? I'm going to give you two different forms of it. So for the right triangle, you've learned that this is the base and this is the height. And the area of a right triangle is 1 half base times height. So that's one formula that you want to keep in mind. Now, perhaps you've seen a right triangle, but used in terms of the Pythagorean theorem. So these are the legs of the right triangle. And C, the longest side, is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And based on the Pythagorean theorem, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And so that also relates to a right triangle. The perimeter of a right triangle is the sum of all three sides. So it's A plus B plus C, if you ever need to find it. 
sometimes you might get a question to ask you, hey, what is the perimeter of a right triangle? And so just add up all three sides. That's all you got to do. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is a scaling triangle. In a scaling triangle, all three sides are different. So let's call this angle A, angle B, and angle C. The capital letters are used to describe the angles. Across from angle A, we have side A. Across from angle B is side B. And across from angle C, side C. So in a situation like this, let's say if you know the angle and the two adjacent sides. Well, let's say we have angle C and side A and side B. In this case, you can calculate the area of this triangle, which represents the area of this shader region. It's going to be 1 half AB sine of angle C. So you need the angle and the two adjacent sides. So you can also express that formula this way. Let's say if you have side BC and angle A, it's going to be 1 half BC sine of angle A, or 1 half AC sine of angle B. So you can use any one of those three variations. The one I use most often is this one, 1 half AB sine C because it goes in alphabetical order, A, B, C, and so I think it's easy to remember. Now the next triangle, actually, going back to this triangle, there's something else that you need to know. And let me redraw this. So here's A, B, and C. There's another way in which you can calculate the area. So let's say if we don't know the values of angle A, B, or C. All we have is just the three sides of the triangle. In this case, you could use something called Heron's formula. And the area, let me write it here, is going to be the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Now you might be wondering, what's S? Because you know what A, B, and C are. S is one half of the perimeter. So basically it's one half of A plus B plus C. So once you find S, you just plug everything into this formula and that's going to give you the area of a scaling triangle where all three sides are different. The next shape that I think we should talk about is the parallelogram. And there's only really one formula that you should worry about the parallelogram. I haven't used any other formula except this one. And typically, you might be quizzed on calculating the area of a parallelogram. And so all you need to do is multiply the base by the height. So area equals base times height for a parallelogram. The next shape is the isosceles trapezoid. So this is called base 1, this is base 2. And this is the height of the trapezoid. And so the area is 1 half the sum of base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So basically, whenever you add two things and then divide by 2, you're averaging those two things. So you could think of the area of a trapezoid as being the average base times the height, where the average base is just the average of these two numbers. So make sure you know this formula for the isosceles trapezoid. 1 half b1 plus b2 times h. Now the next shape that we're going to talk about is the rhombus. And a rhombus is similar to a square in that it has four sides and those four sides are all the same. So if you call one side s, they're all equal to s. Let's call this diagonal 1, the distance between, let's say, point A and B. And diagonal 2, which is the distance between, let's call this point C and point D. So the area of a rhombus is simply 1 half D1 times D2. 
So that's the formula you want to know. And the perimeter is 4 times the side length. Now some other features about a rhombus is that they bisect each other at right angles. And so let's say if this side is 3, this side will be 3. If this side is 4, this side is 4. And thus we get a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the sides are all 5 units in length. So those are some things you want to keep in mind in terms of a rhombus. So for this particular rhombus, D1 is going to be 3 plus 3, which is 6. D2 is going to be 4 plus 4, which is 8. So the area is 1 half 6 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Half of that is 24. So the area would be 24 square units. Another way you could do this if, is that you could find the area of each triangle. So focusing on this triangle, we have a base of 3, a height of 4. Area is 1 half base times height. 3 times 4 is 12. Half of that is 6. So if this triangle has an area of 6, and we can draw 4 of those triangles, here's the second one, here's the third one, and here's the fourth one. 6 times 4 will give us 24. Now the next shape that I want to talk about is the ellipse. And let's compare it to a circle. So what is an ellipse? An ellipse is circular, but it's not like a circle. It's like an uneven circle. Notice that it's elongated, whereas a circle is just even in all directions. The elongated side is called A, and the shorter side is B. And let's say this ellipse is centered at the origin. In the case of a circle, this would be R, and this side is also R. Now the area of a circle is pi times R times R, or simply pi R squared. Now the area of an ellipse is pi times AB instead of pi times R times R. And so you can see some similarities between the ellipse and the circle. But this is the area of an ellipse.